Father, we come to you at this time thanking you for your many wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to ask you to forgive us of our sins, whether by words, thoughts, or deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We just ask you to erase those sins from the book of remembrance. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything you have done. We just thank you for everything you have blessed us with. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Bible class that we're about to uh, partake on tonight. We just pray that uh, there is something to be said that we can use in our everyday life. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we love you. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hello and good evening, family and friends, and welcome to Bible study. We hope, trust, and pray that this message finds you and your family well at this time. Listen, we rise to give God glory and we rise to give God praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised. Come on, family, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is great 
and greatly to be praised. Oh, how magnificent, how mighty, how marvelous, how majestic is the name of the Lord our God. It was the psalmist who said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light along my path. I'm thankful that even on today, we can receive spiritual nourishment and spiritual encouragement from what thus saith the Lord. God's word will never pass away. Heaven and earth will decay. Heaven and earth will deteriorate. But the word of God shall stand forever. And I'm grateful that we can stand on the word. I'm grateful that we can stand for the word and praise God. We ought to be standing in the word. Amen. We are just most delighted to see you here as we study another portion of God's holy and inerrant word. Of course, it's always a delight to see the superlative saints of South Union in the house of God. And we invite you to invite someone else to this moment of spiritual encouragement and enlightenment. Here at South Union, we believe that as God blesses us, he expects for us to be a blessing to others as well. So let's take a moment and share this message with as many people as we possibly can, amen? All right, family, <clears throat> if you have your Bibles or your electronic devices, meet us or beat us to John the 14th chapter. We're going to read two passages of scripture as we uh, leap from this platform of Bible study on tonight. Uh, the first is found in John 14 and verse 27. John 14 and verse 27. And then we have one more uh, verse that we would like to illuminate uh, for this particular foundation on tonight. John 14 and verse 27, the Bible, the word of God reads, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's the first verse. The second verse for our consideration will be Psalm. Psalm, the 34th Psalm. And uh, we want to illuminate verse 14. Psalm 34 and verse 14. The Bible, the word of God reads, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. All right, family, we would like to use for a thought theme and thrust of tonight's lesson, the pursuit and power of peace. The pursuit and power of peace. Say that with me right where you are. The pursuit and power of peace. Amen and praise God. Family, peace, the kind of peace that comes from the Lord is a priceless possession. I believe that we all can admit that out of all of the attributes that any person could ever possess, there is absolutely no price tag that one can put on peace. Peace is not sold in retail stores. You can't buy it online. Peace cannot be manufactured in some kind of uh, man's laboratory. Uh, peace cannot be picked up in a book outside of the Bible, but it is the word of God that ushers in perfect peace into our lives. Jesus said, I'm going to leave some peace 
with you. But the kind of peace that I'm providing is not the kind of peace that can be ascertained, attained, or accessed in the world. If you're going to get this kind of peace, you've got to come to me. And listen, in a real sense, family, we need peace right now. Yeah, we need peace today like never before. We have so much going on all over the land, all over the country, all over the world. We need peace to permeate our atmosphere. We need peace to empower our spirit. And we need peace to help temper our soul. Listen, I am here to encourage someone to see that God has peace readily available, but we must find ourselves in covenantal relationship with him. Peace is not a new phenomenon. You know, uh, all around uh, the world, even right now in our communities, people are looking for peace. Uh, people just want peace. They want peace in their families. They want peace on their jobs. Uh, they would like peace in the church. Uh, we need peace, family, because without peace, it is very difficult to achieve uh, desired results. It's very difficult to uh, reach maximum output of productivity if there's a bunch of confusion, if there's a bunch of strife. Uh, if there's a lot of fighting uh, going on, we don't want to be in a situation of hostility, but we all desire peace because when you're in a peaceful environment, you can get much accomplished. Amen. You can get the work done. So on today, I would like for us to study from this concept of peace and encourage the body that uh, it's time for us to walk therein and it's time for us to be clothed with peace in our minds, uh, of course, in our spirit and uh, of course, in our souls. Now, let's take a deeper dive uh, into what peace really is. Now, I've come up with uh, several descriptions and uh, designations for peace and what it means, and I'd like to share them with you at this time. Now, uh, what is peace? Someone asked the question, well, what is peace? That's a great question. Uh, that's a great question because people are trying to even self-medicate looking for peace. They are doing any and everything, trying to reach for this and grab for that and uh, trying to make themselves look this way or look that way or, or fit in, just looking for some peace. So what is peace? Well, uh, a description of peace is uh, peace is the internal insulation uh, that allows us to live with a sense of stability and serenity while operating within adverse conditions, but we are able to thrive due to internal properties that fuel us within. Amen, somebody. I know that's a lengthy description, but that's what peace is all about. Peace is about us being insulated internally, and it allows us to have and operate with a sense of stability and serenity. Even though we are functioning with adverse conditions, we still have these internal properties that fuel us within. Simply put, this kind of quality and attribute, and it is a supernatural attribute because you can't buy it. You can't learn it. It's something that the Lord gives you when, we, when you grow with him according to his word and walk in his way, walk in his will. Uh, we can't go to the schools of higher learning and learn what peace is. We have to take the Bible and the Bible will grow us up where we can walk in peace, having God on our side. What is peace? What is peace? Good question. What is peace? Uh, here it is, family. Peace is the principal word uh, that is used to create 
and to describe uh, the insulation of the Christian. What keeps the Christian cool in adverse conditions? What allows us to breathe when uh, all around us we have conditions that would seem to suffocate us and just take out every ounce of life within. We must have this peace. Now, this word peace uh, comes from uh, a Hebrew word, uh, which is salom, uh, salom, salom. Now, this word salom emphasizes completeness, wholeness. It is the state and reality of wholeness, uh, completeness that includes health and wealth. So this uh, concept of peace, this reality of peace includes health and wealth, and it describes the wholeness. God does not want his people to be lacking. He does not want his people to not have what is necessary to make them whole. God desires that we are whole people. God desires that we are healthy people. You can be uh, a person who is in covenantal relationship with God, but if you've not chosen to pursue peace, then you can be left lacking and not be whole. And God does not wish that any of us should be lacking in any kind of spiritual way, but he wants us to be people who are whole, healthy, sound in mind, sound in judgment, and uh, this is achieved when we can walk in his peace uh, as he and only he can provide. Uh, let's dig deeper. This word peace, uh, peace has been described as the absence of war. And peace is the absence of war. However, I would like for us to put some more on it. Because not only is peace an absence of war, but we're going to see even scripturally that peace pr brings on a positive. In other words, it breeds positivity. Peace is not only the absence of, which is a negative, but peace brings in a positive. Amen. It brings in hope. It brings in encouragement. It brings in strength. It brings in outlook. Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 34, 14, uh, that we ought to seek peace and pursue it. Uh, let's, let's look at that very quickly. Psalm 34, verse 14, uh, here it is, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and what? And pursue it. Depart from evil. That's the negative. Depart from evil and do good. That's the positive. Seek peace and pursue it. Find peace, but not find it in what you see in the world. You can only find this kind of peace when you come in contact with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now, Jesus says, I'm going to leave some peace. He knew that he had to leave and depart this world because he was headed on to glory. But before he left, he's told his disciples, I'm going to leave you some peace. But this is the kind of peace that passes all understanding. It's the kind of peace that the world can't give it to you. Uh, and this is the kind of peace that must be entered and engaged within the covenantal relationship of God. Now, uh, let's dig even deeper. This word peace. Uh, brings on a positive connotation. This word peace emphasizes, here it is, total well-being, total well-being, and is closely associated with God's presence. Ooh, glory to God. Praise his holy name. Peace. When we have peace, it is associated with God's presence. Uh, you see, in the Old Testament, God gave his peace to his people when his people kept his commandments. Somebody missed that. Let me hit the tape and rewind it once again. You see, in the Old Testament, God granted peace to his people when his people kept his commandments. In other words, this kind of peace that is supernatural, 
is the kind of peace that is a reward based on our faithfulness to God. And I want to prove that in the scripture. Uh, this kind of peace, if we want peace, the kind of peace that passes all understanding, the kind of peace that the world can't provide, uh, this kind of peace can only be enacted and accessed through obedience and faithfulness. Amen. This kind of peace, this word peace in the Old Testament comes from the Hebrew word salon, which meant literally to wish one well. Uh, to wish one well. I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing uh, well up on your soul and, and for it to be well with your family. Uh, who, who among us doesn't want it to be well within our family? We want peace on the job and peace in home and peace in the church. We want it to be well with our family. As a matter of fact, it is utilized as a greeting even among those who are Hebrew today. Uh, peace or, or Israelites today, uh, peace, shalom. They greet each other with this kind of well wish uh, for their neighbor because they want to treat their neighbor as they would hope uh, to treat uh, themselves. Now, uh, let's look at this particular term and, and let's uh, see uh, how the Bible expands and explores this concept called peace. I'm talking about the pursuit and the power of peace. Watch this. In Numbers, the sixth chapter, turn with me to Numbers chapter six, and let's examine verse 26. Numbers chapter six and verse 26. You should find these words. <clears throat> the Lord, well, 25 is very uh, popular as well. Uh, verse 25 says, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. This hinges from verse 24. Why? That the Lord bless you and keep you. Watch this family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Don't miss this family. When God keeps you, when God holds you, when God possesses you, then one of the attributes applied to your spiritual life is peace. God's presence is with you and God's peace is upon you. And this is why you have not cracked. This is why you haven't crumbled. This is why you haven't bent or bowed to the weight that you're carrying upon your proverbial shoulders in this life is because you have peace within your soul. And when you have the presence of God, you have peace within your life. If no one else in the room can have peace, you have peace. You bring peace into the atmosphere. You know, peace is uh, much like um, a thermostat and the thermostat controls the temperature. Come here for a moment, family. This kind of peace controls the temperature of the room. We need people who are people of peace who pattern their lives in a peaceful manner, who here it is, seek peace and pursue it. God is wanting the children of Israel to know that as you walk into uh, this promised land, I'm giving you peace for the journey. Somebody come here for a moment. We need to pack some peace for the journey of life. We need peace on our job and we need peace as we operate with our fellow man. We must pack peace for the journey because we don't know what awaits us up ahead. You don't know. Listen, have you ever been driving? And as you are driving, you see these warnings and caution signs, uh, these signs to help you know what lies ahead. 
Many times there may be a curve in the road or a sharp grade in the highway, but you don't just stumble up on it because the engineers and the planners, uh, those developers, those city um, government officials, they know how treacherous road conditions can be. And so they give you some warning signs before you reach that particular area. Somebody ought to come here for a moment and help me testify. I praise the Lord for warning signs and God gives us these signs so that we can have peace for the journey. Is there anyone online with me right now who's thankful that they have peace for the journey? You know right now full well that you would not be where you are. You could not have made it. You're not as smart as you may want to pretend to be, but it was nobody but the Lord who cautioned you and who prepared you with peace for the journey. You packed peace, you packed patience, and now look at where God has you sitting even right now. You may not be where you want it to be, but praise God, you are not where you used to be. I thank God that we have the pursuit and the power of peace, and that's exactly what he does in the lives of his children. Turn with me very quickly uh, now to uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and it is the 54th chapter of Isaiah. Uh, let's look at verse 10 and hear the Bible, the word of God reads, um, <clears throat> for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. You see, peace, I told you, is found within the covenant. You see it right here in the text, family. Peace is found within the covenant. Peace can be accessed within the covenant. The kind of peace that only the Lord will provide can only be accessed within the covenant. And this is why it is so fundamentally important to be in the covenant of God, to access the blood of Jesus through the commandment of baptism, to put Christ on in baptism, to be added to the Lord's family, uh, to be received within the family and God provides unto you the kind of peace that you need to pack for the journey. Is there anyone here with me right now who can praise God for peace within the covenant? Peace is right there. God is going to prepare his people and his people need peace for the journey. Uh, turn with me very quickly uh, to Psalm. Let's go to Psalm and let's look at the 37th division of the Psalm and verse 37. Now watch this. Psalm 37, 37, the Bible reads, Mark the perfect man, the complete man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Do you see it right here in your text? The end of the upright man, the end of the complete man is peace. Now, uprightness has not to do with posture as much as it has to do with provider. Oh, come here for a moment, family. Listen, uh, the psalmist is not declaring uprightness as in posture, but he's declaring the one who walks uprightly before the Lord, who recognizes his provider. The end of his story should be peace. Amen. Peace, patterned after peace, fashioned after peace, because he has relationship with the Lord. Amen. Relationship. Uh, turn with me to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, and uh, let's look at verse 1, and then we're going to land back into the New Testament. Proverbs 3 and verse 1, 
Listen to the Bible, the word of God. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And peace, watch it. How are you going to receive this peace? You're going to receive this peace when you keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments of your father. I told you that peace is conditional upon commandments, upon faithfulness, and upon obedience. And the Lord adds, he, here it is, applies peace to your account. He applies it to your account. Why? Because you are in covenantal relationship with him. He guides you. He guards you. He protects you. He keeps you. He holds you because you're in peace. Now, I'd like for us to go to Romans, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> and let's uh, pull up the parking brake. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and pull up the spiritual parking brake at verse 18. Paul reminds the Roman uh, Christians, uh, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, here it is, live peaceably with all men. As much as lies within you, pursue peace, seek peace and pursue it with all men. All right. We are to be people of peace. God has called me to be a person of peace, to be a man of peace, to be a husband of peace, to be a Christian of peace, amen, to be a supervisor of peace. Put peace on wherever you need it to go in your walk of life, amen, an employee of peace, a student of peace, a son of peace, a daughter of peace, a wife of peace of peace. Can it be said that I'm a man of peace? Can it be said that you're a woman of peace? Can it be said that you are an employee of peace? Can it be said that you are a supervisor of peace? Can it be said that we are people of peace? Uh, very quickly, turn with me to Hebrews. Hebrews, and we'll land here uh, or, or land back uh, to where Jesus gives us the instructions. Hebrews. Let's turn there quickly to the book of Hebrews and uh, the chapter is 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 12. Yeah. Book of Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at verse 14. Verse 14. Now let's listen to this. Here it is, family. The Bible, the word of God reads, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Watch it. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's right here in the text, family. We are expected as Christians to live on Peace Street, <laughs> to live on Peace Place, to live and to move, to operate therein on Peace Boulevard. God will empower us to be great people. You got it, of peace. Amen. So when we dial it back and go back to what Jesus says, here is the summation. Jesus says, peace, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now watch this as we close out. Peace, according to the text, is that essential element that the Lord wishes for us to possess. And the benefit of possessing this kind of peace is that we are not to be troubled and we shall not be afraid. 
Oh, do you see it in the text, family? We shall not be troubled. We shall not be afraid. It's right here in the text. Oh, brothers and sisters, God does not wish that we are ever troubled. And he does not want us to be afraid. And while living in this world, if I'm going to have and possess this kind of peace, this kind of attribute, this kind of blessing, I must realize that the Lord has equipped me for this spiritual journey. And my responsibility is to seek peace and pursue it, not seek it. In the world, not seek it in what the world offers, but seek it in the riches and annuals of God's word within his counsel by his Christ. And his name is King Jesus. Amen. The power, the pursuit of peace. I don't know who you are, perhaps don't know what you're going through if you're watching with us online, but we all desire peace. Maybe perhaps you need peace in your family right now. You're dealing with some family issues. You're dealing with some issues that would overtake you. But you know that you can stand firm when you have the kind of peace that only God can provide. God always wanted his people to dwell in peace. Even back in the garden, peace was broken when sin entered the world. And God calls us to return to this kind of fellowship. And this is the kind of fellowship that will sustain our souls until the very end. And if you need to say yes to Jesus, then you need to believe that his word is true and that he is the only begotten of the father, the only begotten son of God, full of grace and truth. And we invite you to put him on in baptism for the remission of sins. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful concept, family. And let us never take it for granted. It's a powerful concept for us to dwell within peace. And the Lord will do mighty things with your life. Amen. Amen. The pursuit, the power of peace. If you don't mind, let's pray right now as we close out this Bible class. Oh, Lord, our God, <clears throat> how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we lift up holy hands unto you. For Father, no other help we know. But Lord God, with you, all things are possible. Father, we thank you for this avenue of powerful prayer and Bible study. We pray that you've been glorified, that your family has been edified. We want Satan to be petrified. We're on fire for you, Lord. Bless us, heal us, provide for us as only you can. Add a special blessing to each household that's tuned in even right now. Bring us back at the next appointed time, Father, that we might study your holy word and remember all of the great things that you have done. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We praise your holy name in Jesus, heaven's precious gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Listen, family, if you desire prayer or Bible study, then uh, just call the number that you see on your screen. We believe in the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. We know that it avails much. And uh, if you'd like Bible study, we're always here to give you a Bible answer for every Bible question that you bring to the table of investigation. Well, until next time, as we always say, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Have a blessed week. We love you in the Lord. Have a blessed week. We love you in the Lord. Have a blessed week. And we'll see you on the other side. God bless you.
Smile on my face. You're my everything. 